Hello everybody, Gaz Williams here at Toman Synth Reactor 19 with the legend that is Chenk! Yes! <laughs> Chenk, oh wow, the, wow, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about our photo from Nam at Digiton Launch, maybe. And that uh, photograph, I yeah. wonder if I can get it up, is the best photograph <laughs> of all. To be honest, I've never seen it in my life. I've never seen a better photograph. Thank you, I, Internet. I <laughs> yeah. This is the photograph, mm -hmm. and it turned into. <laughs> this is what it became. <laughs> the proud parents <laughs> with the little baby. Oh my goodness. Yeah. This is a lot to make out of this, yeah. There we go. I think this is more entertaining than talking about machines. <laughs> but yeah, let, let's do why we're here for. Okay. Yeah, so we got the model samples and here. Yes. So the model samples. Now, I was sort of joking with you earlier, thinking that this is like what happened to the Volker sample when it grew up. Yeah. Yeah. It, pretty much the case, right? Right, yeah. <laughs> so it's not a sampler, it's a sample playback yeah. device so you can load samples into it. How much memory is in there for loading samples you in? You have one gigabyte of storage ah, okay. and uh, 64 megabytes that you can use, can use in a project. It's exactly yeah. the same as Digitact mm -hmm. in that sense. As opposed to the Korg Volker sample, four megabytes of sample. Yeah, <laughs> and you have to load it with some with kind of yeah. model di modem dial-up from yes. the 90s. Yeah, yeah it's the, taking that the, retro yeah. thing just one step too, too far. But hey, I mean, it's a unit like that and... Uh, it, it, but it's yeah. A good one. It is really good, yeah, and it yeah, actually yeah. sounds great. The yeah, bottom end of it is really, really yeah, good. Yeah, so it is yeah. a very cool thing. It is. Now, if you've got a Volker sample and really love that, mm. you do hit some limitations of the Volker sample, mm. especially to do with kind of pitch manipulation. It's mm. really difficult. It's doable, mm. but it's not a lot of fun. And some other things as well. It becomes, you know, you kind of hit the limit of it yes. uh, if you want to do anything beyond a certain point. But the Volker, sorry, the uh, <laughs> the Electron model samples could well be the ticket because yeah. for Electron, it's a new price point as well, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we were aiming for like 399 euros. Mm -hmm. This is what it should be sold at your local shop or online or right. somewhere. This is the price. And um, mm. yeah, it's got all the Electron superpowers. We we like to name it as. <laughs> you have the Electron sequencer. Yeah, yeah the classics. Tracks. Yeah, and then of course you can load your samples via USB. Mm. And the one thing that I really like, and we're going to look at that later, the mm -hmm. USB is class compliant audio yeah. uh, compatible. So that we have it hooked up to an iPad, which we'll get to that later. For this sure. is really, really cool stuff, I think. And, yeah. And one thing to note is that the whole point of actually for us to maybe make this unit was to actually have a, a simpler approach to the electron world, the electron magic. Mm. Now we have direct controls on mm -hmm. all our machines, for example, the heat, you have these menu buttons to switch between the no soft knobs. Mm. We don't have soft knobs here. Right. Everything is what you see. And so this makes it a simpler and a bit more smoother workflow. Okay. And, and I guess that the small display is there for certain utilities. Yes. But there's little, there's little LED and, mm -hmm. those, and those will show brightness for in intensities of parameters? Oh, I wish it did, but it doesn't right. do that. Okay. Uh, what, it, uh, what it actually does, its sole purpose, is that when you're locking parameters per uh -huh. step into the sequencer, it, which you is can see, very electron. Yeah, you can see which ones have got. Oh, exactly. oh yeah, per step. Yeah, it's of course. Of course, it's per okay. step, and then this could yeah. be like this. So maybe yeah, you could make a little yeah, yeah. game like, oh, look at this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, we could make another cross here. Yeah, uh, it would be like this. So, oh, this is <laughs> a, 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 a game. <laughs> you take it into, yes. <laughs> okay, across. That's very fun. Yeah. Um, so it's like so. We say you you load your samples in yeah. over over USB. Um, there are samples that I guess it comes with as well. We we've been partnering with the Splice, and we have three hundred samples that, that it comes with. Right, and they're from Splice. Okay, and uh, yeah, and then you and we offer a lot of sound packs. Uh, I really suggest that uh, you know people do load in their samples. Mm -hmm. um, there's the Splice content is quite a specific sounding one. Uh, so then I think the unit starts really shining once you put your own sounds in there, right. especially field recordings. Uh, mm -hmm. We present this unit as a drum machine or that type right. of scenario, but... Uh, I was going to ask about the drum yeah. machine side of it. I mean, mm. these are velocity sensitive, are they the pads? Yes, they are. Right. Nice. Yeah. Can I have a little feel of it? Of course. They feel pretty good. Yep. 
<laughs> I think it's a really cool um, yeah. uh, the, the setup. I, I really mm. like the interface a lot actually because yeah. you have the tracks here and you have the sequencer here. Right. So what happens now is that let's set the BPM to something like this. Uh, so I put some kicks in on this track. Mm -hmm. Let's pitch it down a bit. Yeah. And yeah, the graphics, eh? Look at that. Yeah. There's a little tuning fork that gets wibbly wobbly as you as you tune it out. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, me too. It's wow. uh, neat. I really believe in uh, there is something that happens in our brain when you are actually hearing a sound and some right. graphics is changing in front of you. Mm. Uh, I really believe and actually feel that something extra is happening in the brain. So visual and audio yeah. reception is mm -hmm. very uh, close combat, I think. Right, right. So, and then what I was saying is that it's yep. so easy because now I could just click when the sequence is running, go to that track and put some steps in. Right. And then here we go, some hi -hats. And then maybe some open hi-hat here. And then here we go, let's put some steps in. And the choke group. Yeah. There is no choke. No, no choke, okay. No choke. okay. Um, because uh, the, we don't have a choke, but you can emulate that. What you can do is, so uh, the, the hi-hat comes in here, so I'm gonna mute those. And also because I can lock all the parameters per step, gotcha. I can emulate a choke. So I'm going to shorten the sample length of that trick of this sound. So it's going to sound oh, right. like right. So you're this. making your open. So oh, I can make cool. it short. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a. Yeah. You might think then that six drum sounds is a bit limiting. Hmm. But that's not the case. No, it isn't because uh, the electron sequencer allows you to automate a lot of stuff, uh, all the parameters. And now we just recently uh, updated the firmware on this, and now it has yeah gone sample locking. Sample locking. Yeah. So basically, Amazing. you know, yeah. uh, these are the sounds we loaded in here. Yeah. Okay. On the kick track, I'm yeah. going to just focus on the kick track. So I muted yeah. everything. We got just the kick. So mm -hmm. I put a step in. I press the wave button. And then I could select whichever sound that I want on that track. So I'm going to select this. And here we go. Okay. And here I'm going to select another sound. Uh, yeah, here we go. And then here I'm going to select a totally different sound from uh, here. The kit is called Hate. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so uh, you're not limited to six samples playing. You're limited to six voices, yeah. which can six. trigger multiple samples. Yeah, mm -hmm. so thinking of it as six voices rather than six tracks is yeah. kind of better. Yeah. And like when we were saying about choke groups, well, if point, you, why, not, why not just put your open hats and closed hats on the same? You can do that. On the yeah, same and track. And they will choke. Yes, they will choke. You know, yes, and yes. then you yeah. just put them in. But yeah. uh, one thing to say about choke, I think we're thinking about it. Uh, of course, we would like to see it in there, but... I've been in, you know, hearing and seeing that yeah, it mm. may come in the future. Uh, this is not an official promise at all. <laughs> I'm just saying that yeah, we are aware of it, and uh, it would be nice to see a fix. That's all I can say. Mm. Currently, there is work around of it. Okay, yeah. I can see a delay and rebuild send as well. Yes, so that's, that's on a, really on a good. Per track. Uh, it's a well, uh, there's send effects, so you have master effects, so you send them in there. Yes, so, uh, that's what I meant. Yeah, but, but each yeah. track has got a different amount of send. Of course, yes. Yeah. And that's the delay, and uh, and then the delay can be self oscillated if that is your thing. It is. Yes. <laughs> that is in, that is that exactly my thing. Yeah, I love it. Then maybe we should buy a motorcycle for you. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to go on my bicycle, just doing that through a loudspeaker, though. Just uh, yeah, maybe we should get into the pedals. The, yeah, MIDI send. <laughs> I mean, this could work. Like this could be the first gear sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 What what's happening? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah and that that's another thing. Mm. One thing that I really really like yep. uh, is that I'm going to do, for example, 300 BPM now. Okay, uh, and then. I'm going to put uh, that steps. Is, that's my tempo, 300 yeah. BPM. Of course. Yeah. Otherwise, the crowd doesn't go wild. No. Yeah. yeah. So what I'm doing is I'm putting steps on all the uh, all the tracks and uh, all have 16 steps. Whoa. Okay. And then this is the masterpiece. 
<laughs> oh, sorry, I haven't mu unmuted the other ones, and this is it. <laughs> yeah. But, I'm into it. <laughs> yeah, maybe too. Yeah, just a tiny bit. But what I'm trying to show you is that we have a new parameter called chance. Oh. So uh, if I hold the track button and change any of these encoders, including chance, I affect it for the all six tracks. Ah, so that's like the all function. On control all. Yeah. Control all. Mm -hmm. That is a genius function. Yes, I think so too. So on yeah. the digitact, which is, I gotta say, modern classic, yeah. digitact. That's like a, you can think of that as the big brother. It is, it is. Or the middle brother mm, to yeah. the octatrack. Exactly, or the rhythm. Or the which rhythm, one, yeah. Which how one, how yeah. the person perceives it, because, mm. uh, yeah. I mean, these kind, these units are like shapeshifters. You can use it in multiple uh, use cases. It's <laughs> kind of weird. Right. And now, so if I drop the chance to zero, uh -huh. okay, and nothing is playing. Oh, but now if no I chance actually, of it playing. Oh, yeah, all. And bring it up a bit. Ah. <laughs> and then maybe add some reverb or something. Uh, and you know, this could be like the beginning of your gig. And that's You don't need a motorcycle, man. Here it is. Ah, what I say. But, yeah, you don't need anything else. Uh, but, uh, the chance <laughs> is, is cool. really good. I mean, if mm. we go to a standard pattern, mm. let me see what I have here. Okay, here we go. That's all right. So now I could uh, drop the chance for all the tracks, and, and notice how it become it can become a bit groovy and humanized. Performance tool, the mm -hmm. chance as a yeah, performance. Yeah, I think the whole thing is, is kind of related to that, but mm. this kind of like uh, diminishes the way that I use mutes. Kind of like this is my mute thing now. If it's I want to mute, I just go mute. like that and then it, like, bring it in. That's like a dynamic yeah, mute, it's yeah. something. That's it's a very, very interesting thing. That definitely. One. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's one of the things that I really like. And, yeah. and uh, like I was saying, it's class compliant audio too. And that's, uh, uh, that kind of leads us to this, doesn't yes, it? So, yes. yeah. very useful then because, like here, I've got an iPad Pro. Now, on this iPad, I'm running AUM or Audio Unit Mixer by um, Kymatica. I go on and on and on about how awesome this is. But basically, it's like a configurable mixer. It starts with no channels. Well, you can save setups on it. And here, I've got two tracks. I've got one track with Audio Damage's awesome granular Ooh. synth, which is called Quanta, Oof. which is very, very cool. Ooh. And, uh, you know, Quanta is really good. You can get it for your desktop software as well. Uh, now, I've got that running on a track. Let's just close this. It's being fed by, here I can see my MIDI, I've got a little MIDI routing mm -hmm, here, mm -hmm. and we can see that the Electron samples has, has appeared as a hardware in for the MIDI. So that's coming out. So we got the MIDI being sent yes. in. Also, I've got an audio track here set in, and we can come here. One of the great things with Audio Unit Mixer is that you can choose, you can mix and match hardware inputs and software inputs and just add root things any way you like. It's, it's a very, very cool piece of software. Yeah. So, hardware input, I'm running, and we can see there model samples left and right. Yeah. And is you just straight away plug straight in? Straight away, no, yeah. no, no messing around. No messing around, yeah. 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 And then, at the and, and this is as if, if, if yeah. sorry to interrupt, but no, of course. this is actually the first time we plugged it in, and it worked. It just worked, yeah. Uh, so that's so that it's not like Overbridge, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know Overbridge? I mean, so Overbridge. Yeah, let's talk about that Do, now. Like, just a little <laughs> bit let's, about Overbridge. Let's make people wait on what we were trying to do. <laughs> overbridge. No, because Overbridge has been a bit of a saga. Yes, it has been, and really it is been. an amazing thing, mm. really. But I guess what it is also is something that is. It's been a very difficult thing to It has uh, implement. been, uh, and also one thing to note is that we, we have a lot of units to support Overbridge. Yeah. Oh, there is, isn't there? Yeah, there's the Mark 1s, the Mark 2s, mm -hmm. you know, and that, that doubles up the you, the pressure, and ultimately we need to deal with the Mac OS X and Windows updates and ah. make a compatible driver for everyone. everything. Everything. I'm just going to jump ahead expect. here, just in case you don't know what Overbridge is. Overbridge is essentially uh, like a kind of plugins for your desktop computer. It's not... 
on the iPad. I, mean, no. I don't think it ever will be really. I'm not sure if that if that could happen. It would be amazing. It would be amazing. Yeah. But it, it means that you can essentially use your electron devices as plugins mm. inside your track, mm. audio and MIDI. You know, it, which is really really great because you know you don't have to use up channels of your audio interface no. you don't need to create an aggregate device no, for your audio no. interface it, 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 all the all you know. the multi-track audio streaming is mm. handled by the plugin while the plugin offers you a great interface for your unit yeah i mean it is really really impressive when i see it working, working. and yeah. i actually have been seeing it working flawlessly since now yeah and we are just actually at this awesome toman uh, event uh, we've been showing the digitone plugin yeah so it is coming together mm. it is going to be out in a public proper release it's a, uh, when it's we're a, ready we're, we're on a there's a public beta beta out isn't there mm -hmm. uh and so this is overbridge 2.0 i have to say as lovely as it is i like the graphics on version one a bit more yeah i, I, I can think actually it was a beautiful yeah. look yeah. now yeah. it's maybe a bit more standardized yeah. and ma i can understand the logic of it yeah i i think i i think we share similar feelings mm. there uh, I am not saying the current version is bad at all. I think this is what we're talking is subjective taste. It's like our own personal oh, taste. Absolutely. And because I, uh, yeah. the plugins are totally, I think they're, they're usable. And uh, oh, yeah, in, yeah. in terms of usability, I really think the, the remake, the current version is better than the older. But uh, hmm. it, it seems that Gaz and I have a similar <laughs> taste. And uh, we seem that we did prefer yeah. the older color scheme. Yes, yeah. But um, yeah, that's okay. <laughs> uh, change is inevitable sometimes. <laughs> and uh, whether you like it or not. Yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, but so. Of, um, the iPad. <laughs> the iPad. So we've got this little system going on here. I've got the audio input coming from the samples, uh, but the audio output is going back into yes. the samples and then audio out into the heat, which is essentially we're acting almost like a mixer that we could just. Yeah, well, uh, I, I yeah, we like that, and I just yeah. wanted to you know maybe up the yeah. sound a bit. We always want to do that. So right, right, we right. Like motorcycles, I guess. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah and that, that's what we've got it in. But Should one thing that I really yeah. like is that uh, the six tracks can be also assigned to MIDI. So you have six tracks of audio. Uh, right. And the same tracks can be uh, activated as MIDI and sample at the same time. So on six track on the track number six. I activated the MIDI. Uh, ah. You can see it there, a little tick. Yeah. Oh, okay. And what's cool is that uh, the, the bass tone is coming from this unit. So if I uh, crank it up with the distortion, and if I maybe lower the pitch now, so it's like you can uh, almost layer sounds like this. And of course, this is totally sequenceable. You know, you can sequence that. And I think it's pretty cool that, you know, you're sending MIDI like that. Yeah. At the same time, audio is coming audio like is that. Coming that like, uh, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Mm. And at the same time, so here we go. We have this, uh, this weird beat going on. <laughs> what the hell? I mean, who yeah, made yeah. this? It's pretty fast. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm going to slow the, the, the MIDI track really down. So it's like... like ah, this. right. So running at a different scale. Yeah. So, so now scaling. we could maybe... Yeah. Put one step here, yeah. and then here I'm going to change uh, the note to maybe like that. Mm. Here I'm going to change the note to, gosh, I'm going to make such a mess out of this. <laughs> yeah, I sh you should be doing this, Gas. Uh -uh. And then I'm going to put some random notes here, and then just uh, twiddle them around, and then so here we go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So you can control external gear with uh, just this box via USB, especially when it comes to this iOS, iOS stuff. So actually the chance parameter is pretty cool as well oh my on, God. A, on a MIDI sound as well. Of course, yeah, yeah. totally. Uh, let, let's do something like that. Mm. Um, 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 let's uh, set this to normal speed and uh, maybe uh, put some steps <laughs> like this. Uh, and mute the other tracks. Yeah. And then maybe use the chance, of course. Sorry. And of course, I can assign different pitches. Hmm. And so it's going to play. There you go. It's like it's like a monkey jumping on a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed then when you were doing pitch, you were seeing it as actually note num note names rather than abstract numbers. Yep. It's going to see. Yes. So you can. So if you load your samples in, and you. 
So they they should best be way to C. do in C. Yeah. And Sample the, into C, yeah. and then and then all the note numbers, only the note names are going to make sense yes. then. Yes. Yeah. And uh, this is what we've been trying to do on the factory content. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the sample yeah. are kind of C. I mean, it's hard to make it just C, and especially mm -hmm. with chords and that. You know. How long can a sample play? How long can a single sample be on it? Uh, a 64 megabyte limit you have. Okay, but the, the length of a sample. Oh, um, of a sample. The the file format is 48 kilohertz and 60, 16 bits. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm sure people can Google it now. Uh, that's <laughs> format rate for 64 <laughs> megabytes. Yeah. How much the time of audio would that be? <laughs> oh, no, but I mean for a single sample, is there a can can the single sample be like? Could you load in like a backing track onto a single? You have 64 megabytes of. Uh, so megabytes. you can use it however you want. Yes. Okay. Now that's good. Uh, the 64 no, megabytes no. is is you know it's meant to be used as one shots. Yeah. But if you want, you could load yeah. in. You know, 10 megabytes, and then yeah. another one could be uh, 20 megabytes, yeah. and another one could be 30. But just to reiterate, though, that 64 meg is from with your pool of a gigabyte. Yeah. So you can have a big old library, and then yes. that particular song, you just draw yes. what you need yeah. into the sound list, yes. and then you can swap around. And that's really to do with the speed of just of it being able to yeah. pass samples around. Exactly. And uh, mm. another really cool thing is. Yeah. Uh, you have the notch thing, so each of the steps can be notched back or forth. Oh, neat. And so uh, you can come off grid with it. Yeah, exactly. And that's really. Can you really record? Cool. Can you record off grid then? So can you just? Yeah, great. So so yeah, so you you mm -hmm. literally you can put it in. You can do that nice Dilla thing, that mm -hmm. sort of that J Dilla thing, that lazy sort of mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. You're not kind of on the rigid. No, uh, if I, you want, or if you don't. Want. I think our machine stopped being rigid since Octatrack actually, uh, right. because Octatrack offered the micro timing. Micro timing. And machine and mono machine were very rigid, right. and uh, I think they deserve that because they're so obtuse devices. Yeah. <laughs> Love them, yeah. <laughs> but now, now, of course, with the octa track and the rest, yeah, we, we, we finally cracked the sequencer where you can have micro time. And okay. here we are. Mm -hmm. Well, Cenk, I'm afraid we have now run out of time, oh, yeah. yeah. And we could go on and on because mm -hmm. this thing is a pretty awesome so it's available now, mm -hmm. yeah. And so mm -hmm. we reckon around a sort of street price of around 400 euros, yeah. So it's a uh, it's 399, 399. Uh, euros, I would like to say, it's right. right. Uh, yeah, it's uh, up and down. Uh, mm -hmm. It's around that ballpark. Right, point. things are in, yeah, in, in sort of flux at the moment. Yeah, mm. analog heat, which is the Mark II. We haven't really looked at this. This you is something that I am absolutely. Yeah. So you know, these things are Let's awesome. Wait, right, play out. Let's yeah, do a yeah, play out. Yeah. And, yeah. So we got this beat. Yeah, let's uh, turn it the, the wet down yeah. and then really crank the distortion. Oh. This sounds really... And I need to pitch it down a bit here. Oh, wow. What's going on? <laughs> Check. Awesome, give it, bring it. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, catch you next time. Yeah. Gavin Williams, check. <laughs> <laughs>